Okay, I'm just going to run through a quick sample of short answer questions. So I'm going to create a new short answer question and I'm going to just show you one use case, but hopefully when you look at this, you'll see lots of other possibilities. So here's the kind of question that I'm kind of trying to work at. Give the IUPAC name for the following molecule and our molecule is here and the name that we want back is here. So I'm going to copy the name of the question. Uh, shorten that a little bit for the title. Great. Copy in our picture. And then copy in the possible answers. And this question type is quite easy to use. So if the student types this exactly in, then they will get 100%. But as you can imagine, there are lots of other possible things the students might type in that we would want to give them partial marks for. And also, these dashes can be a little bit tricky because there are other possible um, there are other possible characters that students could put in, and we wouldn't want to take the marks away from them for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in well, if the student puts in one bromo, three chlorobenzene, but uses some other character as a space, then that's okay. And I'm also going to let them have any character they want in between chloro and benzene. Now that's a little bit generous and you can change that grading as you see fit. But what this will do is it will check first, it will check to see if this is the correct answer or if this is the answer given. And if it is, it'll give it hundred percent. Then it will check to see if the answer matches this and it'll give hundred percent for this. Now it is possible for students to play this system because it will accept anything for these two asterisks. So a student in theory could put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, chloro, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, benzene, and still be given 100%. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're designing these questions. Of course, if students do try this, then you can restrict the answers um, and you can regrade as you see fit. But that's not the only possibility. So we might also, if we copy and paste that down here, want to give the marks if the numbers are incorrect. So they get bromochlorobenzene, but they don't get the right uh, numbering. Well, then we'll give them half marks. There are of course other possibilities. Uh, so what if instead of having bromochlorobenzene, they have the wrong alphabetical order and they get chlorobromobenzene? Well, in that case, again, we might offer them 60% of the marks and we might tell them alphabetical order is important. So one of the things that's worth remembering when you're doing this is that it will sequentially look through each answer to find a match. And if your first answer or your second answer matches, then it doesn't matter if the subsequent answers match. So you'll get 100% here, but if you don't match this, you'll get 50% if you don't match that and so on and so forth. If you put these in the opposite order, then students can only get 50% because this would automatically match in this category. So it's important the order that the answers go in. So going back to it, here we have uh, the wrong order. And if they put them in in the wrong order, they can also put the numbering in in the wrong order. Bromine has a lower priority than chlorine. So we might give this only 40%. And again, say that alphabetical order is important and numbering is by priority. And of course, there's another possibility which would be entirely correct, which would be if the student called it uh, meta chloro, or sorry, meta bromo, chlorobenzene because that adequately describes the mo molecule as well. So we could give that 100% too. And then finally, just as a capture all, if it doesn't match any of those descriptors, we can put in a wildcard. So those stars will accept any set of characters and they will get no marks for anything else. And that just closes out the question. This is a really useful 
uh, question type for these kind of questions. So we'll just uh, save that and then we can review it. So we can try out different possibilities. If we call it meta uh, homo chloro benzene, we can see that we get 50% of the marks. So something has gone wrong and we're gonna to have to review our question. And you can see that we're running into the classic problem here where this question or this answer, of course, takes in the meta bromo chloro benzene. So we need to change the order of these um, these answers because otherwise we won't ever get down to the meta possibility. Uh, so that's 100%. As a general rule, the more specific ones go towards the top and your grade should decrease as you go down. And that way you will typically not run into the problems. So now if I save those changes and I go back to my question, I can refresh it. And now it's marked as correct. It doesn't actually update it, this part, but it does show that this is now getting 100%. So if I start again and I say meta bromo chloro benzene and I check it, this time it'll give me 100%. And you can check other things. So we can check incorrect answers such as um, 1, 2 bromo chloro benzene. And we only get half marks because we've got our numbering wrong. So we've got the alphabetical order right, but we've got our numbering wrong. Anyway, that's just a little insight. Once you've got one made, then of course you can duplicate them and we can copy and paste in our other possible molecules. So this is 1,3-dichlorobenzene. And then of course we need to add uh, all of the different possible answers and save it again. So. That's a short answer question. Uh, it's quite useful for naming molecules or lots of other possible applications. That's all for now. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks. Bye.